Hello and welcome back to the Reactivist Podcast. I'm Marlena Scheida. I always have a field day when it comes to the next generation. I've become one of those people. It's so hard not to. It's so hard not to. You you come up in an era that I came up through where you went to work every day and there was a hierarchy at that work. And if you were tired, you went and got yourself a fifth cup of coffee. Okay. It's not anybody's problem. You didn't get the proper sleep. It's not anybody's problem that you're hungover, that you had a fight with your girlfriend or boyfriend or next door neighbor or the meter reader. It doesn't matter. It's nobody's problem. You get to work, you work. Workplace comforts started probably around my mid-career when ergonomics became all the rage, right? I see chairs coming in and out. People are sitting on yoga balls and exercise balls. And this isn't your house. It's an office. If I walk into a business and I see someone sitting on an exercise ball, I'm doing an about face and I'm walking right out. And I'm not saying don't be comfortable. I mean, I think I don't think people should be uncomfortable at work. However, compared to what goes on today, where people have time carved out of their schedule to nap, safe spaces and quiet spaces and people working from home endlessly, what is ever going to motivate this next generation to do better than this generation? That was our goal. I'm a Gen Xer. Even though we were predicted to do worse than the generation before us, and I'm pretty sure we may have accomplished that goal. Either way, we are way better than what's coming up the road. I have, ki- I have two kids. They don't know what a sitcom is. They have no idea what a sitcom is. They don't know what late night talk is because all they do is watch people jump from one roof to another on YouTube or do weird challenges where they eat weird foods and everything is ASMR. ASMR, what, where did this come from and why is it a thing? We live in a world of poppets, fidgets. Gone are the days. We went from Gidget to Fidget. I go into my kid's school. I see rubber bands around the bottoms of the chairs. I'm like, what's this? So, so you know, certain kids need to concentrate by kicking a rubber band. I'm not knocking people who have situations where they need some sort of coping mechanism to help them concentrate. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying, where are we headed? Why does everybody need something else to cope? Why are we raising a generation of people who think it's okay to go to school or go to a workplace like it's their living room? I see kids in pajama pants. My kids want to wear pajamas to school all the time. No, I'm not railing against change. I'm all for change but I'm all for positive change. And I don't know if wearing pajamas in public is a positive change. I don't know that having a quiet room in the middle of the day where people can close their eyes at work is the most effective way to get anything done. Can you imagine working in human resources now? Can you imagine that job? Human resources used to collect your resume and work with the recruiters and hand you your benefits package. Now HR representatives are getting calls on the daily about hurt feelings, inappropriate behavior. Talk about taking the fun out of going to work. You know, one of the benefits in my 20s and 30s was all the people I would meet at work and become friends with, and we'd go out for happy hours. We'd be on the road together covering all kinds of news stories for so many years. I would meet people from other networks. Uh, You you would meet all kinds of people on the road and you would work 
it was um it was collaborative it was fun everybody comes to work hung over the next day nobody everybody needs a nap and nobody's taking one people are hooking up i mean you you take all of that out of the workplace i mean what's left i mean aside from the work itself what's left we're social animals we're human beings if i can't say anything about anything to anyone because I'm avoiding the risk of someone reporting me to HR and starting a file because I insulted them by saying I don't like oat milk. I mean, what, what, what are we supposed to do here? What, what Really, what are we supposed to do here? It's so boring. I love offensive jokes. If a joke isn't offensive in some way, it's probably not funny. Get a grip. Life is meant to be lived. We have to have fun. And yeah, there are boundaries in different places and in different spaces with different people, but crossing boundaries, that's way more fun. Like seriously, get a grip on your life. And I just don't think that raising a generation that's offended by everything is the right way to go. I don't think this whole work from home thing is working. Trust me, it's not. I think that the flexibility is fine for the different needs of different people. But I think overall, people should get up get dressed and get to a separate space where everyone around them is working. See, if you keep people at home, no one knows what a workplace culture is like and therefore they don't know how to socialize. And that's why when they end up at a desk somewhere, everything is offensive. They're offended by being asked to go to work. How did we get here? If you can't take a joke, I don't think that we should accommodate you by giving you a nap room at your job. You're very sensitive and you can't take a joke. So here, here's a quiet room at, in the office where you can go, if you even come into the office, here's a quiet room where you can sit and be with your thoughts and HR is on speed dial if you need them. I don't think that's what we should do. I think that companies should now go backwards a little bit. And I'm all about going forward, but I think, I think we need to reel it in a little bit and say, listen, if you can't handle basic workplace banter with your peers, you have some work to do on yourself, but the work that you have to do on yourself can't take place here. So either you grin and bear it, or maybe we should part ways and find somebody else for your position. Little, little, little tough love, a little more tough love on these kids. I don't have to worry about it so much for myself, obviously, because I'm older, but my kids, I feel like by the time my kid, my, I have young kids, by the time my kids are older and out in the world, I feel like they're going to be working from their bedrooms. I really hope I'm wrong but I have a story about working with this next generation. I was working on a production and I obviously was the producer, or maybe that's not so obvious, but I was the producer. This person was my editor, okay? And he was probably a good 20 years younger than me. And I need editing done. And I needed to show him uh, a few things on my laptop to give him direction as to what I needed him to do and also a couple things for him to change, okay? This person was sitting on a couch off to the side in this office space and looking at his phone. He was looking at a soccer game. I walk up to him and I say, hey, listen, I need to do X, Y, Z. And he doesn't look up, keeps staring at his screen and puts his index finger up. No eye contact, no movement of his head, just like, I'll be with you in a minute. Are you joking? He wasn't kidding. He told me nothing. And he signaled to me that you'll wait. You will get in line 
behind my soccer game. When I was in my 20s, we didn't have these smartphones everywhere, so it was a little different. But even if we did, even today, I still wouldn't do that to somebody. If someone addresses me, I look them straight in the eye and I listen to what they have to say. And now if I need a minute, for whatever reason, I would say, okay, I need to do this one thing before we get started, whatever doesn't matter. I would form sentences. I would make eye contact is the point. I wouldn't signal to anybody. I wouldn't do that to a peer. I wouldn't do it to uh, a superior. And I wouldn't even do it to someone who um, was a subordinate. I wouldn't. It's basic human respect. Someone's talking to you, you address them appropriately. If it's not the best moment to do something, then you Communicate that with your mouth hole and sounds that come out of it. But I could tell you, considering that I was staring right at him and knowing exactly what he was doing, that did not trump the work that he was being paid to do. It's amazing. I know people talk about the entitlement of the next generation all the time, but I don't think we talk about it enough to the point where it's going to change. And it's up to this generation, my generation, to change it. You know, we add things on applications now like gender identity and male, female, non-binary or other, right? We can add all of these things. We can make that change, right? I don't know why we need to care what someone's gender ID is for a job. That it's, can you do the job? That's number one out of the gate. I don't care if you look like Barney. If you are a skilled professional, you're hired. But I will say that I think there should be a whole other section. I think we should add a section about your sensitivities. Why not? We want to get to know you. So tell me. Can you handle someone smiling at you without it being sexual harassment? Can you handle someone expecting you to do your job between the time you walk in the door and the time you leave? Can you? And this is a tricky industry, by the way. The media industry, there's no start and end time. Everything's 24 hours, right? Everything. That, and, and, and everybody is reachable because of their cell phones and mobile devices. People can be out of pocket for a little while. You don't, you don't have to answer immediately. Although I come from a generation who answers immediately. When someone answers immediately or within a very short period of time, I'm like, yeah, you're my people. If you answer me five hours later, you're fired before you're even hired. I once had a subordinate tell me, that's a terrible word, subordinate. I once had um, a person who was in my department. I was her supervisor who never answered an email or a phone call over the course of a weekend. An entire weekend went by. And when questioned why there was no answer, her response was, my phone died and I didn't have a charger and I was at my grandparents' house and they don't have phones like this. So they didn't have a charger. Do your grandparents live in the forest? I I'm, I'm guessing that they don't, they probably live in a house somewhere and there must be an electronic store within a decent mile radius of their home. You drive. I know that. Be resourceful. Go to the store. Get yourself a charger. And then you can expense the charger to the company. If you didn't want to pay for the charger, you didn't even have to because you bought it for work. So it would have been free. The only thing you would have had to pay for is the gas that took you from point A to point B to get the charger. Um, okay. God forbid. Are you kidding me? You didn't have a charger. This started a while ago, this lax generation, but it's getting so much worse. Whenever I 
encounter someone who's a bit younger, who seems to really get it. I feel like I'm being punked because to me, these people don't exist in this generation. These hardworking, dedicated, focused, driven people. There's a major shortage, major shortage of that in this country. Give me a president who can fix that. Then you have my vote. Oh, <laughs>